Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth and we do receive it this night. Written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We will take hold of it, be doers of it. We thank you that it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We are sharing with you on the subject of, about your members. We've talked about how important it is for the things that you see, the things that you hear, and we're talking about the things that you think upon as we began to talk this morning. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, first of all, we need to address something here. The scriptures in the King James is not translated things accurately. We're not against the King James Version, or we're only in, in, interested in truth. The word heart, I put the cursor over here for the first time. There's a tremendous program that can put information up in the lower window about the word. This is the Hebrew word that is translated heart here. It is number 53, 15 out of Strong's concordance. It is the word nefesh, and it means soul. It does not mean heart. Unfortunately, they translate it that way. I can even prove it to you in this verse that there is a different word for heart because you see heart is used another place. Here's the word for heart, and is the word lab, which is truly the Hebrew word for heart, referring to the inner man or the heart. In fact, when you look at the loose usage of it, as we brought forth this morning, this so shows the usage of this word in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament. 592 times it's been used, and it's been translated heart 508 times, which is the correct translation. Our point is, it literally says, as he thinketh in his soul, so is he. The soul is made up of the will, the intellect, and the emotions. And one of the things that's so important about the soulish realm is our thoughts, because our thoughts affect us from feelings, thoughts that come from the flesh, feelings from the flesh, in our reasoning, in our mind, they affect us in our will, the choices that we make. So our thoughts, as you are thinking in your soul, so are you. That's quite a statement. That means if you're not thinking correctly, you're not going to be walking in the right ways, because you are as you think in your soul. So we got to get correct thinking. And as we talked about this morning, we'll review a few things. We pointed out that God wants every one of us to have the mind of Christ. We saw the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, where he says, Who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. How did these guys get the mind of Christ? Because they got it renewed to the truth of the word. That's what God wants. He wants us to get the mind of Christ. Now, do we have that just because we're born again? No. When you receive Jesus and you're born again, what happens? You get a new spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ. Your spirit's right with God, but it, nothing's happened to your mind yet. You've got to get your mind renewed to the Word of God. And we saw the scripture in Isaiah chapter 55. In Isaiah 55... We saw in verse 8 where it says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Well, how can we get his thoughts to become our thoughts? It's through the word. He goes, As the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and turns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that be it that be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And what does it do? It comes into us, into our heart and mind. It shall not return void. It shall accomplish which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. God's word is going to bring a revelation of his thoughts and his ways. And God will open up our mind to have understanding of the scriptures. Now we saw that if we are going to get the mind of the Lord, one scripture we looked at this morning, Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, if you then be risen with Christ, referring to the fact that you've been born again, seek those things which are above. You're seeking heavenly things, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection, which is to have understanding in your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. How are you going to get the thoughts of God into you? Certainly not thinking on the things on the earth. No, we're supposed to think on the things above which is the things of the Word of God that are revealed unto us. 
You're dead. Your head, life is hid with Christ and God. Remember, you're born from above and you have a brand new spirit on the inside of you. So God wants to set your affection, which refers to your, your mind to have understanding upon the things above. And that is so important. And what's going to be the result is you're hearing God's word. Well, you're going to get his thoughts in you. And you are going to be, as we saw this morning, Romans 12, 2, you are going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As your mind is renewed to the word, it is going to bring a change on the inside of you. This word transformed is a Greek word, metamorpho. If you remember from science class that the word metamorphosis is the process whereby there's a change in species from the caterpillar to the butterfly. That's exactly what will happen in you. You're going to be changed from a carnal-minded to a spiritual-minded person, from worldly-minded to heavenly-minded, from your thoughts to his thoughts, and that's what he wants. And we must understand this renewing is a complete change and renovation. God wants a complete change and renovation in the way you think. And it will come through the word of God that comes unto you. And remember that as this has happened, one other scripture we looked at this morning that's rather important. God has given us a mind. And what's, what's the purpose of us getting all this these knowledge and understanding? Well, 1 John 5, 20 says, We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding or a mind to obtain understanding. It's a form of the word for mind, dianoi. That we may know him. What's the purpose? So we can know him. God wants you to know him. He wants you to know his ways. He wants you to have his thoughts. He wants you to have a revelation of him and walk in fellowship with God. That's why we need to get our thoughts, our mind renewed to the word of God. Now, we talked about that there's, well, there's an enemy, enemy against you, which is the devil, and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And his thoughts, he will try to bring into you to lead you astray. There's also thoughts that come from the flesh. Your flesh, your body, has not been changed, and thoughts will come from it that will try to lead you down a path of destruction. Those would be thoughts that are inconsistent with the Word of God or thoughts that are just coming from your own desires from a human nature standpoint. That's not what you want to follow after. And let's look at the two scriptures that are especially reveal the devil working against you as, as from the types and as well as your own thoughts. Psalms 56, verse 5. Every day <clears throat> they rest my words, talking about enemies, in the Old Testament, you can understand it as physical types and shadows of spiritual realities. So the devil is trying to get to your words so you'll speak wrong words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. The devil can bring thoughts into your mind. He brought thoughts, you know, into people's minds throughout the Word of God. We saw how he brought thoughts into Peter's mind, you know, for him to speak against what Jesus was saying, how he was going to be going to the cross and he says, be it far from thee. It looks sound like a good thing to say, but it was a human nature thing. And it was the devil that came into him because Jesus rebuked the devil that was in him. All their thoughts are against me for evil. The devil's thoughts must be dealt with in our life. And we must learn to take our thoughts captive and think on good things. Now, another thing that we see is you cannot trust your own thoughts. Isaiah 65, verse 2. Here's the statement that he makes to the, the people, the Israelites, who were not walking in his ways. He said, I've spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people that walketh in a way that was not good. What kind of a way were they walking in? Oh, after their own thoughts. If you walk after your own thoughts, it's not a way that's good. You want your thoughts to be the thoughts that come from the Lord which will be in line with his word, they're going to be directed by the Holy Spirit on the things that he wants you to do. You see, you cannot walk in the ways of just human nature thoughts. They're going to lead you down the path of destruction. Look at these scriptures in Psalms 94, over in verse 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they're vanity. They're all vanity. They're all out for what I want, serve self, things that please me, instead of walking in the ways of the Lord. And what's the word world full of? Vanity, 
everything all for themselves. No. God does not want us to have those thoughts. He wants us to get his thoughts. Now, if we have evil thoughts that have come to us, whether it's from the devil or from the flesh, these are thoughts of iniquity, as the word says. Isaiah 59, verse 7. He says, Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. We don't want to have thoughts that are of iniquity or wicked in the sight of the Lord. We don't want to have thoughts of righteousness. Notice what happens to the person who has these kind of thoughts. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Are you going to be blessed if you have those kind of thoughts? No. You're going to see nothing but destruction coming down the line. That means we need to govern our thoughts because your thoughts affect your outlook, the way you're going to choose, your attitudes, your focus on things, your, your desires, whatever thoughts are going on in you. You need to have God's thoughts so you will think on the things that He wants. Also, your thoughts will affect you on the inside of you because gates into your heart are not only what you hear, what you see, but also what you are thinking upon. Look what it says. Jeremiah 4.14 O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? So what did the vain thoughts do? It affected them in their heart, on the inside. And then it caused them to be impure on the inside of them. This is why we've got to watch our thoughts. It's going to affect your heart. God's looking upon your heart. And you'll have wickedness within you. And you'll be unclean on the inside of you. In fact, we even see over in the New Testament where it talks about in James chapter 4, verse 8, about dealing with sin in our life. It speaks of drawing nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. He wants you to deal with sin. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. What's that tell you? If you're double-minded, it's causing impurity in your heart. God wants you single-minded on the Word so that you will walk in His ways and you'll follow him. So what's coming in through your mind, it's going to affect your heart on the inside of you. And God is looking upon the heart. He's with you according to what is in your heart. Also, if you will not watch your thoughts, what's going to happen? And you walk in the ways of sin, that's how the devil comes into people. That's how demons get into a person. Look at the situation in Mark chapter 5. Here is a man who was out in the tombs. He had unclean spirit. And it speaks down here, this guy was so bound, he's dwelling in the tombs. No man could bind him, not with chains. He'd been often bound with fetters and chains. Chains had been plucked asunder by him and fetters broken in pieces. Nobody could tame him. He was really out of his mind. Night and days in the mountains and the tombs, cut, crying and cutting himself with stones. And another parts talks about how he was running around and wore no clothes. This guy was totally out of his mind. But when he heard about Jesus, he saw Jesus afar off and he ran and worshipped him. And what did Jesus do? He began to cast the demons out of him. He began to tell him to come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. He began to cast out these spirits out of him. And what happened when the spirits were cast out of him? The result. Verse 15, they come to Jesus, see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, he had a tremendous amount of demons in him, sitting and clothed, and in his right mind. That tells you something else. Demons can get into your mind, and if they're in your mind, they will affect your mind to not be right. Certainly, they will give you thoughts, they will give you desires, and they will distort your thinking. They will affect you adversely in your mind. They can cause all kinds of things, mental illness, panic attacks, suicide thoughts, depression, anxiety, all kinds of things. Blank out your mind, race out your mind, bind your mind, all kinds of things it can do for you, do to you. This is the work of the enemy. God does not want you to have that. He wants you to have a sound mind. So that's another thing. When we do not govern our thought life, we will, if we sin, we will let spirits of that type come into us. For instance, if you're lusting in your mind after someone, you're going to let spirits of lust come into you. You know, if you're whatever you're thinking upon is going to open up the door for those type of spirits to come into you. This is why we've got to watch our mind, and that is so important. In fact, look at how people get to the place of backsliding, going back into evil things. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, 
It says, because that when they knew God. So these are people that knew God. They had a relationship with him. They glorified him not as God. Well, you're going to glorify him because he is God. If you don't, then you're not keeping your eyes on him and worshiping him for who he is. Neither were they thankful. They weren't thankful at all. Otherwise, they quit having their eyes on the Lord. Now they got their eyes on themselves and what they want. They became vain in their imaginations, all their reasonings. Their inward, this refers to their thoughts and inward reasoning. That's what happens. They became vain because if your eyes are on, on the Lord, they're going to be on something and they're on whatever they want to do. And they were all had a mind of the flesh and they were, had vain imaginations. And that affects their heart, remember. Their foolish heart got darkened. And now they're not having revelation of the ways of God. Instead, their hearts darkened. Now, they said they were wise, but they became fools in the sight of the Lord. And they even got off and began to change the glory of the incorruptible God and all these other things, amazingly, that they would worship birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things and all these different images, amazingly. But that shows you what, how a person can be so deceived. Well, God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God will not, will not make you do things. He tells you what to do but you can choose otherwise. You set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. You've got to choose the right thing. If you choose the wrong thing, he'll let you have what you want. You say, well, why would God allow me to choose the wrong thing? Because he's given every one of us a free will. We aren't robots. He wants us to be ones who choose the way of the Lord. He has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. He tells you the way to choose. But if you don't choose the way, the wrong, right way, and you choose the wrong way, you're going to get whatever you choose. He's given every one of us a free will, and we can choose. Well, they made the wrong choice. They changed the truth of God into a lie. They began to worship and serve the creature more than the cre creator themselves. Who are they serving? Self. They're walking by the flesh after their own thoughts. And that was a mistake. God gave them up to vile affections. This is how they even get into homosexuality. Women changed their natural use into that which is against nature. And the men did the same thing and got into homosexual things. And what happened? They didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, in their precise, correct knowledge. No, they didn't have the word in them anymore. They're thinking on everything else. They got all this worldly stuff and all this vain stuff. Well, God gave them over to a reprobate or unapproved mind to do the things that are not convenient, and then they end up walking in all these destructive ways. This is how a person backslides. Remember, they knew God to begin with. They had a relationship with him, but they did not follow his ways. God expects you to glorify Him, give thanks to Him, follow His ways, walk in fellowship with Him, and He will bring His blessings upon you. But if not, these guys got off track, they got a reprobate mind, they backslid, and they'll walk in the ways of destruction. You see, you've got to realize the devil is going to try to deceive you. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. It speaks of lest Satan should get an advantage of us, but we're not ignorant of his devices. Or ignorant here means not knowing. You've got to know of Satan's devices, how he's trying to work at you. Not knowing of his devices. God wants you to know how the enemy is trying to work against you. He'll bring thoughts to you, contrary to the word, so that you will walk in different ways. So you will not think on the things that he wants. In fact, what happens if you don't know the true way of the Lord? What happens to these people? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 says, As obedient children, that's what we're supposed to be, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts, and why would they do that? In their ignorance, their lack of knowledge, this means. Otherwise, if you don't have the knowledge of God in you, in your mind, You'll, you'll just follow the former lust. You'll be led by the flesh, and you'll just follow all these things of the world and the fleshly ways, which will lead you down a path of destruction. This is why we've got to get the Word of God in us. It is mandatory. Over in Ephesians, chapter 2, look what it says over in verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Notice, there are desires that come from the flesh and from the mind. If you don't get the word in you, your mind will not have the desires to do the right thing. 
if you have a mind that's been affected by the flesh or the devil's come in and he's affecting you, thoughts from the devil, thoughts from the flesh, thoughts from the world, the worldly ways, then you'll follow after those ways and you'll end up fulfilling those desires or the will of the flesh and the mind. And so we got to guard ourselves and get our mind renewed to the truth. This is why you can't be minding earthly things. If you're minding earthly things, you are on a path to destruction. Look what it says in Philippians 3, verse 18 and 19. Paul writes to the church at Philippi and he says this, For many walk, that's not a few, that's a whole lot. Now, that's not what should be happening. Many walk, of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping. He's weeping because he knows what's going to happen to him. They are enemies of the cross of Christ. What's the cross of Christ all about? It's not just the fact that he took our sin and bore it away. The cross is also supposed to be applied in our own life because we're to take up our cross daily, which is the crucifying of the flesh and the desires of the flesh, so we don't walk in the ways of the flesh and the ways of sin. They were enemies of the cross of Christ. They weren't walking after God's ways. They were walking after the ways of the flesh and the world. Look what it says. Whose end is destruction. And that tells you something. If we're an enemy against the ways of, the, of, the, the, uh, ways of God and we're walking after the flesh, we're going to end up in destruction. What was their mark of them? Their God was their belly? Ah, their flesh is running the show. Whose glory is in their shame? And they're minding earthly things. What did we see? We're not supposed to mind earthly things. We're to set our mind for understanding on things above, not on all these earthly things. Because you're born from above, you're to walk after heaven's ways. You're to walk in the spirit, not after the flesh. And this is very important. Also, your works are so important. Don't think that your works don't have an effect upon you. They do. Look what it says in Colossians 1.21. You'll see the principle. You that were sometime alienated enemies in your mind, how? By wicked works. Your works affected, affect you in your mind, and you'll be an enemy in your mind by these wicked works, and you'll be alienated from the things of God. That's the way we were. That's why can you be doing things that God does not want? No. It'll cause your mind to have a wrong focus and you'll be alienated. You'll actually be an enemy in your mind against the things of God. Another example that shows you being an enemy is if you walk in the ways of the world. See, we're, we're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We cannot walk in worldly ways. Look what it says in James 4. It's quite an indictment against someone who's walking in the ways of the world. He calls them, he says, you adulterers and adulteresses. Those are ones that have broke covenant with God. Spiritual separation. You know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. No, this world system is dominated by the devil. He is the one who's the ruler of this world. And if you walk after the ways of the world or the ways of the flesh, you're going to be yielding to the devil left and right and you're going to end up being an enemy of God, and he's not going to be able to manifest himself. God wants you to conquer and overcome in all areas, and he wants you to conquer every area of sin in your life as well. This brings us to another point. All sin in your life is to be conquered. And how can I conquer it? Because Jesus already conquered it, so therefore you can conquer it through God's power, not in your own ability. You can do nothing yourself. But God will enable you to overcome all areas of sin. Look what it says in Hebrews 12.1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you. Do you have a sin that so easily besets you? It seems to pull you down. You're to lay this aside. You're to conquer this thing. And you're to run with patience or steadfast as the rates that set before you. Because where is your focus? You're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You're focusing upon the Lord. And you are to, what are you supposed to do about dealing with sin? Verse 12 says, you've not yet resisted unto blood, striving, fighting against sin. We can overcome sin. Sin has no dominion over us. God wants us to get the word in us so we will walk in the ways of the Lord. 
Now, one other scripture it's important for us to look at for a moment. It's in Romans chapter 8, which we saw this morning. Your thoughts are absolutely very important in your life. And if you don't get your thought life governed by the Word of God, you're going to have nothing but problems. You'll spin your wheels continually, and you'll wonder why you're not getting anywhere. Your thoughts are gates into your heart. Your thoughts can give place to the devil. Your thoughts can, if you walk in the worldly ways, will cause you to be enemy against God. It's going to hinder him from working. But if your thoughts get renewed to the truth, it's going to produce great things because you're going to affect your will, your choices, and you're going to think like God wants you to think, and you're going to do the things that he wants you to do. Look at this. We see the contrast between a mind after the flesh and a mind after the spirit. A mind after the flesh is the human nature. I'm just doing whatever I feel like doing, whatever I want to do. The mind after the spirit is one that's after the ways of the spirit, the word of God, thinking what the word says in every situation. Romans 8, 5 says, They that are after the flesh, that's your focus, where you're walking after. They'll mind the things of the flesh. That's where your mindset will be. They that are after the Spirit, their mind's going to be after the things of the Spirit. Now look at what it says next. To be carnally minded, that's a fleshly mind. It produces death. I don't want a carnal mind, a mind run by the flesh. Sin dwells in the flesh. I'll just be walking according to my own ways. That's going to produce sin. So, well, I'm not doing anything bad. Well, that's good, but that doesn't mean you're not walking in sin. If you're walking in the flesh, run by worldly ways or run by your own desires, inconsistent with considering what the Word says, you're walking in the flesh and you are walking in sin. You're not going to see God manifest Himself. But to be spiritually minded, how can I be spiritually minded? My mind's renewed to the Word. I'm thinking on what the Word says, and I do what the Word says. That's affecting me in all my decisions, all the choices, all the steps, all the actions that I take. What does that produce? That produces life and peace, and that's what God wants. He wants us to get our mind renewed to the truth. Now, thoughts that come from the devil, they have to be dealt with. Thoughts that come from the flesh, they have to be dealt with. Thoughts that come from anything that you might hear out there or you see in the ways of the world that are not of the Lord, they also have to be dealt with. Because you want your mind to be changed, transformed, renewed with thoughts from what God wants you to do. And that's so important. A scripture we looked at this morning, this is absolutely a very important scripture for every single Christian. 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Imaginations or mental reasonings have to be dealt with. Remember the guy that backslid? He, he didn't get his eyes on the Lord anymore. He got vain in his mental reasonings, imaginations. And then he started going in a different direction. His heart got deceived. And he's now walking in all kind of vanity, all these things. You are to cast down all those things, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, something that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God, it is trying to get a hold of you in your mind above what the Word says, so that you'll choose to do it instead of what the Word says. It's exalting itself in your eyes. Uh, you've got to get rid of that. You're going to cast that down. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought means every thought. That means if we don't learn to govern our mind and our thoughts, we're going to have problems because the enemy is going to get to us and we're going to end up being hindering, seeing God be hindered in our life and we're going to give place to sin. This is also how demons come into people. I've seen so many people, they don't, the major reasons why they have a lot of problems is because they don't govern their thoughts. They let all kinds of negative thoughts come into them. And that'll open up the door for the enemy. That's how evil spirits will come into you, through the open door of sin in your mind. It's one of the means. So you've got to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How do I do that? By replacing the negative thought, casting it down, 
and thinking on the correct thought of what the Word says instead of giving place to that. And we're going to give you some examples as we gave some uh, this morning. We're going to cover a lot of things to, uh, in just a couple of minutes. And also another thing that's important. Having an a readiness, this goes on in the same thought because it's and, connecting that together, having an a readiness. This means you are to be prepared and ready, this word means in the Greek. Being prepared and ready to revenge or to avenge or defend yourself or protect yourself or uh, really come against these attacks of the enemy to revenge all disobedience. What's the disobedience? The disobedience are the disobedient thoughts that are coming against you, trying to get you not to walk in the ways of the Lord, trying to affect your mind adversely so you won't think correctly. So, we've got to be ready to deal with those disobedient thoughts that come. Anything that comes into your mind that is contrary to what God's thoughts are is a disobedient thought, whether it's coming from the devil directly from the world or whatever. Now, if you have a lot of spirits that are already in you, they will work against you in your mind. He wants you to cast out all these spirits and get rid of them because they will otherwise cause all kinds of problems in your mind. They cause you not to have a sound mind. They'll affect your mind. Your mind can be blanking out. God, God doesn't make your mind blank out. It's the devil who does that. They can have you have a racing mind. It just races and races and I can't stop it. What's the world's answer? The world's answer is, give them a bunch of medication and, and, you know, down it all out to try to shut it down. Well, that's just trying to manage the problem because that's all the world's answer is. What's the real answer? Cast out the spirits and get rid of them because when Jesus cast out the spirits, he was in his right mind, sound mind. You can get free of all this. God wants us to understand everything that is going on in you from evil spirits in you or from attacks that come against you, they have to be dealt with. We have to learn to govern our mind. It's very important. Your thoughts are so important. So we're going, and how is this revenging against the disobedience accomplished? When your obedience is fulfilled. Otherwise, there's got to be some obedience here of you doing something. Otherwise, not just whatever God wants to do. No, you're going to do something that's going to bring God to bring you victory over the disobedient thoughts. What's your obedience? Your obedience is to cast down the imaginations and bring into every thought captive to the obedience of Christ by replacing the negative thought with the truth. At the same time, you say, well, I've been doing that, but I have this continually working at me and working at me and working at me. That tells you you've got spirits of that type in you for sure. So what's the answer to that? Not only do you take your thoughts captive, but you need to cast out the evil spirits. We covered a lot of areas today of practical things that we're going to move on and talk about things just to help you to deal with things. Suppose you have thoughts of unforgiveness. Somebody did a terrible thing to you. They might have abused you. They might have rejected you. They might have hurt you. They might have wounded you. They might have done some real evil things. They might have abandoned you. Whatever it might be. What are you going to do? The thoughts would come to hold something against that person and be an unforgiveness against them. What is that going to do? If you will not forgive someone their sins against you, what's going to happen to you? Look what it says in Matthew 6, 14. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Well, that's good. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You're not going to be forgiven. If you're not forgiven of your sins, you're abiding in your sins. Is God going to be able to do anything for you? No. Are you giving place to the devil? Yes. Are you going to have all kinds of destructive effects going on? Yes. And what else is going to happen? If you will not forgive someone, remember what it says in Matthew chapter 18, down in verse 35, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also to you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So he's saying this is what's going to happen to you if you won't forgive every brother from your brother from their trespasses. And what does he say is going to happen? The verse before says, these guys are going to be delivered to the tormentors. Remember, this is the story here in this chapter where a man had a great debt and his Lord forgave him of the great debt. That's all a type of the Lord forgiving us of all of our sins in our life. And then the same man who got forgiven, someone else had a debt 
that owed him. And he refused to forgive him that small debt, even though he'd been forgiven of the big debt. And so the Lord was wroth and delivered him the tormentors because he wouldn't forgive. And the whole teaching is, if you and I will not forgive someone, you're going to be delivered to the tormentors. And who are those? Those are the evil spirits that are going to come in. And you're going to have all kinds of problems. Can we ever justify unforgiveness? Never. Well, you don't know what they did to me. Well, you have to want, know one thing. Nobody gets away with what they've done. God is a just God. Everybody will get their just due. If they have done evil to you, what a man sows, he's going to reap. Now, can you hold something against them, though? No, it's going to destroy you. God will take care of them. You believe they, nobody gets away with anything. But you don't want to be in the same position of getting destructive things in your life by holding unforgiveness. You're to give people what they have deserve, what they have need of, not what they deserve. And really, holding unforgiveness against them, you're holding, you're, you're really judging them and penalizing them and holding an attitude against them. It's judgmental. We can't be judgmental. We forgive. We're going to pray for them. Remember, we forgive everybody their sins and we give them what they have need of, not what they deserve. Therefore, unforgiveness in your mind will give place to the devil. And that is a trick that the devil brings against you. You do not want to give place to that. How about for past things where I feel guilty and I feel so condemned? Is that from the Lord? No. He does not condemn anybody. Well, you say, you don't know what I've done. Well, you may have done a lot of bad things, but you know what? God is not holding your sins against you or condemning you. Look what it says. This is the woman who was taken in the very act of adultery. And this is the, what was said when uh, the woman, uh, Jesus said, Woman, where are those thy accusers? Has no man condemn thee? No, nobody could because they were all with sin. Remember, he said, you without sin cast the first stone. Now they all had sin, so nobody could cast the stone. Well, he says, she says, no man, Lord. And then Jesus said an important thing. He says, neither do I condemn thee. God does not condemn you. What does he do? He tells you, go and sin no more. Just stop it. Quit yielding to it so you don't give place to this anymore in your life. So where is guilt and condemnation coming from? The devil. He's condemning you over your past. Let it go. Anything that reminds you of your past, that you have confessed that sin and you have repented of it, it is the devil coming at you. He does not want you to yield to any of this. Condemnation will sink you. You think, I'm not any good. I think God won't do things for me. I'm guilty. He's not going to be able to do anything because of what I've done. In fact, this is why a lot of people don't even come to the Lord. Because they've done a lot of bad things in their life. And they think, I'm not worthy. I can, I can, I can never, God, you know, I have to, I can't get past my past, all the things I've done. Well, look what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.19. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing, which means charging or reckoning, their trespasses unto them. Is God holding the sins of anybody in the world against them? No. What do they need to do? They just need to receive Jesus. There's only one sin, the sin of not believing on Jesus. He's not. So all these people that say, well, you've got to repent of your sins and repent of your homosexuality, repent of your fornication, repent of all the, all the evil things you've done, confess your sins and all that before you can come to the Lord, is lying teaching. It is false teaching. You come to him as you are. Because first of all, when you confess, if you confess your sins or whatever, do you have any, anybody who can cleanse them and wash them away if you're not born again? No, you don't even have a covenant with God. It will do you no good. If you just change your mind in the flesh, is that really going to get you anywhere? No. You come as you are. What is the thing that we need? We need a new spirit. We need to come in a covenant relationship with God. That's what happens when we get born again. Now, what after happen, happens after that? Then you can confess your sins and he'll rec you'll receive forgiveness and cleansing. And God will work in your life to bring you to the place of repentance so you won't walk in them anymore because you have a changed nature on the inside of you. In other words, God's not holding the sins against a person. What does God always do? He calls you to repentance. 
Now, does that say, oh, if God's not holding my sins against me, does that mean, hey, there'll be no effect of my sins? Oh, no, I didn't say that. The effect of your sins is on you. That's why you're going to have to deal with it and get rid of it. You're going to have to turn from it. You have all the effects of it. And what does it do? Sin brings a curse upon you. This is why we've got to deal with all sin in our life. And this brings us to another place. Many people have thoughts that come against them and say, well, I'm never going to be able to get free of these problems because of my past or whatever. Or I've got all this inherited generational stuff. What am I going to do about it? Well, you're going to be able to do something about it. First of all, when you do sin, what happens? A curse will come upon you, which is the opposite of a blessing. The Bible says in Proverbs 26, verse 2, the curse causeless shall not come. That's another thing. Don't ever blame God. Any thoughts that come and say, I'm blaming God, or I was wondering why God's allowed this to happen. Every negative thing that has happened in your life has either been a direct work of the enemy working against you, or through you opening up the door, through sin, allowing the enemy to come in, or you being affected by the inherited generational iniquity curses from the forefathers that have come down the line. But the point is, there's always a cause for it. The curse causeless shall not come. So, that means you don't get down about the problems you have. They've come from sin. They might have come from inheritance. They might have come from victimization. They might have come from your own sins. But the good news is now we can do something about it. We can cast out all the spirits. We can get free of every bondage. We can break every sin, every area in our life that affects us, and we can get free. Now, one thing we need to notice, in Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7, it says this, Our fathers have sinned, that's all of our forefathers, and are not, they've passed on. Does that mean what they've done has no effect in my life? No. And we have borne their iniquities. What's that? That's an inherited generational iniquity curse because of sin. Everybody on the face of the earth has been affected by this. So, a lot of thoughts that you have that are not from the Lord will come because of inherited generational iniquity curses from the spirits that came into you from inheritance. You see, these inherited generational curses come in at the time of conception. They can even affect you in your outlook and the way you perceive things. Yeah, Dad always thought this way, and I always think this way, too. Well, that doesn't mean it's right. He had all these evil spirits were in him because of all the sinful ways, and so you've had the same kind of outlook or same kind of perspective on things. Why? Because the spirits in you are giving you the same thoughts. Well, you can't have that. You've got to get rid of it. So what do you want to do? You're going to realize it's sin because it's not in line with God's Word. You're going to confess that sin. You're going to receive forgiveness. You're going to repent from it. And you're also going to cast out the spirits that have come in. And that's so important. This is why discovering all the iniquity roots is important if you're going to come out of captivity in your life. Look at this scripture, a very important scripture. Lamentations 2.14. The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. They've not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. What does that tell you? If they would have discovered the iniquity, they could have turned away the captivity. Because they didn't discover the iniquity, they couldn't cover, get rid of the captivity. Because what's that tell you? The captivity came because of the iniquity, right? So that means the sin that produced an iniquity curse, if they don't discover it, they're not going to be able to get free of the captivity. This is why Dealing with all the spirits that came in from your sin is so important. At any time in your life, as well as what's come in from inheritance line. Everyone, we've got to look at our inheritance line. If you don't know what all has come down your inheritance line, you're not going to know what all has come into you at the time of conception that's affecting you adversely. And you've got to, how are you going to get free of it? See? And then all of a sudden it manifests on you and you wonder, I wonder why, why I have all these problems. Oh, because your inheritance line had all these problems and now they're kicking in and manifesting in your own life. Why do cancer come down the line? Why do heart problems come down the line? Why does diabetes come down the line? Why does alcoholics come down the line? Why does mental illness come down the line? Because the spirits are there. 
And what do these demons do? They give the same thoughts and feelings and desires to each generation so they walk in the same ways of sins. Why is one person so full of all lust and fornication and gets in adultery and is not faithful in marriage? Well, everybody in the heritage line was the same way. And if they don't deal with it, they'll be the same way in their own life. Even if they become a Christian, lots of Christians have become born again, and yet they've done the same things in the inheritance line because the spirits in them give them the thoughts and they haven't taken them captive for one, and two, they haven't cast out the spirits to get rid of them. And so they drive them and they're driving them in all kinds of things. This is why we've got to discover the iniquity roots so we can deal with the captivity and get free of it. This is why your thoughts are so important in your life. You must govern your mind. Now, in Philippians chapter 4, we looked at that this morning, but we want to bring it up again. Be careful for nothing. The word careful, merimno'o in the Greek, which means to be anxious, have any anxiety, cares, concerns about anything. Most everybody in the world seems to get hit with anxieties or cares or worries or concerns about things. It is a major way that the devil gets people out of the spirit, off of the word of God, and stopping the word from producing fruit and stopping God from working in their life. The cares of this world will choke the word. The cares, anxieties, get you out of faith and you will not see God manifest himself. It is how the devil works in your mind to get you out of hope, which is a confident expectancy of what God will do, get you out of faith because you'll be full of care, worry, anxiety about this situation. And this is why you especially need to govern your mind. Let's say you're praying for a situation and you're speaking the word and you pray a prayer of faith and, and you're praying the word of God on things. And then the thoughts come for you to be worried about whether it's going to work out or not. What's that going to do? It's just shut off everything you pray. Just knocked it down just like that. Took the word right out of your heart and it's all nothing come to pass. You've got to guard your mind. The devil will work against your mind to try to stop you from being in hope. And you can't, if you don't have hope, your faith's going to not bring anything into pass because faith is the substance of things hoped for. You've got to have hope, which comes from the Word. Remember, and we brought this up this morning, but we need to bring it up again as the Holy Spirit just wants us to be seeing this. Anytime there's a reason from a natural standpoint to affect your mind adversely from having a confidence of what God will do from a promise, that's the devil attacking you. Look what happened here. Here's Abraham. Against hope, and you have to understand what Bible hope means. It's not talking about wishful thinking like we think today. I hope it'll work out for me. No. It's a confident expectancy. It means a confident expectancy. You know what God will do. God's confident expectancy because of the, of the word. Against any confident expectancy, he believed in the confident expectancy that he might become the father of many nations. Why? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He had a word from God that said, this is a promise to you of what I'm going to do for you. So, that was his source of hope. Why would he have something working against him? Well, in this case, it was in the natural because his body was 100 years old, dead to Sarah's womb. In the natural realm, there's no way this is going to come to pass for me to have a child. But instead, God's promise was so, whenever you have a promise, that will override anything in the natural if you believe that promise and act upon it and do what he says, take hold of it, you will see that come to pass. You may have things coming against you in the natural or in your feelings or in your mind or circumstances or whatever that are trying to get your focus off the promise. Now, see, what does that try to do? It tries to get you to stagger at the promise of God. No, you're not going to stagger at the promise of God. If you have a promise that God will heal you or deliver you or prosper you or bring some, something to pass, he will perform it if you meet the conditions of what the Word says. The enemy's thoughts will come to you, in like, like in Abraham, you're not, you're not going to have any child. 
against any conflict expectancy, he believed in it. Otherwise, what's going to be the answer? Believe the word and do not let anything in your mind get a hold of you to cause you to doubt, to waver, to wonder, to draw back, to not continue in doing what the word says, not continue to pray, all these kind of things. The enemy will try to work against you. You've got to govern your mind. Cares of this world will choke the word. Worries, anxieties will stop you from seeing promises come to pass in your life. And that's so important. What say, what do I do with the cares, worries, and anxieties that keep coming against me over this situation, over my finances, over my health, over a situation involving someone I'm praying for, a loved one, whatever it might be? The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care, your anxiety upon him, you cast it on the Lord. I cast all cares, worries, anxieties upon the Lord in the name of Jesus. That's it. I'm not going to pick it up again. I'm not going to be anxious, full of care, worry, anxiety about the situation at all, because I know that's a trick of the devil to choke the word and stop me from seeing my prayer produce results. So you're going to cast all your care upon the Lord and not be worried or anxious for anything. Instead, you're going to pray the word. You're going to release him to accomplish things to come to pass in your life. Suppose the devil brings thoughts to you and says, you're not going to be able to overcome in this situation. Well, he's a liar. Are you going to let those thoughts affect you? If you don't cast them down and replace them with the truth, they will affect you. Look at what it says in Romans 8.37. You and I are more than conquerors. What does that mean? If we're more than conquerors, <laughs> we can conquer anything. You can conquer any attack from the enemy. You can conquer sickness. You can conquer anything from the devil. You can conquer mental problems. You can conquer emotional hurts and wounds and damage. You can conquer hindrances to your prosperity. You can conquer arthritis, whatever it might be, you know, on and on and on, diseases of all kinds. You're well able to because God has made you more than a conqueror. And you have to understand, God will give you the victory. Anything that says, well, I just don't see how I'm going to get victory here, that's the devil coming into your mind. See, if we don't think correctly, how are we going to see God work? It's not going to happen. you got to think like he thinks. And he doesn't win a few and lose a few. He wins them all. There is no defeat in God. He wins everything. He will conquer everything. He healed all. He delivered all. He set everybody free. He will prosper you and meet every need in your life. He will always perform his word. You and I must get such confidence. That's where your mind comes in. If you're not thinking that way, you're not, even got, you're not on the same page as God is. We've got to be on the same page as God is with having his thoughts in us. See? And here, like in the area, he said, well, you're not going to get the victory this time. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be unto God, which giveth, and it's actually in the present tense in the Greek. This is a present tense participle, which would be translated, who is giving. That's correct from the Greek standpoint. Young's literal translation, the best New Testament that there is out there. Thanks be to God, who is giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what's that mean? That means he is, he's the one who will be giving us the victory. We can get a victory in every situation. Amen. That's just not once in a while. He'll give, he gives you victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, does that mean always? It didn't say always there. Well, it's true. It doesn't say always there. The devil kind of brings that to you. Well, then you need to get to find another scripture that's going to give you the answer for that one. 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Aha! <laughs> well, anybody, the devil that says, well, you got victory in the past, but not this time. No, sorry. Always we cause to triumph in Christ. Always. There is no defeat. There is no time for you not to gain victory in your life. You're more than a conqueror. You're a king. God's word works. You have the faith of Jesus that will move mountains, take hold of promises. You can speak into being everything that God says, all the blessings to bring them into manifestation. According to your faith, be it unto you. There is nothing that will limit you. Your faith can grow exceedingly. We talked about that. 
You want you put your get your faith strong and get it in operation, but you got to get your thoughts in line. If you let the devil work at your thoughts and bring thoughts of negativism, depression, failure, I don't know if it's going to work for me. Hopelessness, all this kind of stuff. He's been successful to sink you. You cannot allow those things to get a hold of you. Got to watch that you don't give place to them. How about when God's speaking to you to do some things that are important for you to do so that you will see God bring forth his promise. And yet you're resistant and you're not obeying what he wants you to do. Well, Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, well, I don't feel like doing that, or I don't want to do that, or I'm just not going to do that. Well, that's a mistake. Is that what God wants you to think? No, he wants you to learn to be instantly obedient, to do whatever he says. Whatever his word says, do it. Whatever he says to you. Remember what Mary said to those guys? He says, whatever he saith to you, do it. She understood. Yeah. Whatever he says, it happens. She's watched Jesus. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Whatever he says, do it. Whatever God's word says, do it. Always carry it out. If you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured with a sword. The enemy will come against you. God wants you to have your mind set so you'll be willing to choose what he wants. And be obedient. Be obedient to do what he says in every situation. Now, suppose the thought comes to you about wavering and your faith won't work and, and that you won't see the victory in the situation. Again, you've got to know that when you operate in faith, your faith will always get the victory. 2 Corinthians 4.13, we having the same spirit of faith, you've got the same spirit of faith as everybody else. A thought comes to you and say, well, your faith's not as good as so-and-so's faith. Well, that's a lie. We all have the same spirit of faith. So there's no problem with our faith. We all have the measure of faith. We all have like precious faith. So you cast that down. See, if you don't have your thoughts renewed correctly, you could believe that lie. You know, my faith's not as good as so-and-so's faith. That's why I don't see the victory. Uh, he lied to you now. You got the same spirit of faith as everybody else. Your faith will bring victory for you. I believe, therefore I've spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. You've got to put your faith in operation and work your faith continually and you will see victory come forth in your life. One of the things we talked about this morning is driving out these spirits out of us in this process. Which we need to just bring it up again. The Old Testament are physical types and shadows of spiritual realities in the New Testament. It's important that we understand it is a little by little process of driving out the enemies until they're gone. Why is that so? Because they have power. The enemies have power and they're able to resist. They resisted Jesus in Mark 1 and Mark 9 when he was casting them out. And there's a lot to drive out. You know, people say, well, it seems like these the Jews, I mean, certainly they had problems and they had demons in them, but these guys didn't seem like they had such great amount. But one thing you have to remember, how were the Jews raised? They were raised to follow the law to the T. So they weren't walking in the ways of sin in the flesh all the time, even though they had sin, of course, because they weren't changed. But did they have, they were walking in the ways of, they had the fear of God before them, they had to walk in the ways of the Lord even though they were rebellious and went into captivity, but nonetheless, they were pretty much trained to follow the law. How about you and me? Were we trained in the ways of the Word of God before we got born again? No. We were walking in the ways of the world. How about our inheritance line? Huh, they were walking in the ways of the world. You're affected by inherited generational iniquity curses from three and four generations. Guess what? You got a whole lot that's come into you. Guess what? It's going to be a process of casting out all the spirits. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Just get with the program, stay with it, watch God do a total work in your life to set you free from every bondage. Everything in you needs to come up to come out. But you've got to think correctly. Even people that have believed in deliverance and got involved in deliverance realizing I can cast out spirits, most all of them still don't have it straight in their mind yet. 
because if you don't understand there is a, there's quite a network of spirits in me from inheritance, my own sins, and victimization. And if you don't understand that it's a little by little process of driving them out, and if you don't understand that they have power and can resist, you're going you're gonna to wonder why this is taking so long and why I have so much to drive out. Look at the type here showing Exodus 23, 30. This is how they got rid of their enemies out of the land. The physical enemies are a type of the spiritual enemies which are in us. The physical land is a type of the spiritual land which are the promises of God that you and I possess. Look what he says. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until you be increased, which means this word means to bear fruit. In other words, as they're being driven out, there's something else you need to be doing. You need to be doing the word that's going to bring forth fruit in your life. What does that imply? Confession of sin, repentance, doing the word, following it, so you're bringing forth fruit and more fruit, much fruit, going through the cleansing process, coming to abiding in the Lord. We talked about how you become fruitful. All the things that are involved in that. And then you're going to inherit the land, which is the promise, the possessing of the promise of God in your life. So that's another way. If your thinking is, I'll just cast out the spirits and I'll inherit my land. I'm sorry, that's not what it says. You're going to cast them out until you bear fruit. If you're not bearing fruit by doing the word and walking in it, you will not possess your promise which implies you've got to deal with a sin, confess your sin, walk in the ways of the word, do what he says, you're going to have to have changes across the board. I mean, you can't cast out the spirits and continue to walk in sin and think you're going to get anywhere. In fact, you'll get worse. They'll come back with seven more wicked than himself. You'll be in worse shape. That's why, that's what this is implying is the fact that it's a little by little process until you be increased. Remember what happened in the book of Joshua? They had to go into every city. And he said, drive them out of every city. And what do you see? They're always using the sword, casting them out, destroying the enemies, out of city after city after city after city after city after city, which is all type of area after area after area after area in your life as you're casting out all these spirits and driving them out until they're all gone. And you also need to discover all the iniquity roots, which is all the things that are in you. Boy, how am I going to learn all this? God is going to reveal all these things. Everything that's happened in your life that you have walked in sin has let these spirits come into you. So, that's why, why do we give you that little deliverance questionnaire form to start when we start ministering to you? It gives us a starting point to work with all the problems in your life. And that's just the beginning. Then we can start discovering all the different things that are in there as we follow those ways. Let's say you've had a lot of problems in your mind. Well, the mind one has about 200 different cast out sessions of things on that that can be affecting your mind. You need to get and start working it. Maybe you have mental illness. The mental illness one can help you in conjunction with that to start discovering what all spirits in you start casting them all out. Maybe you've been through a whole lot of emotional hurts and wounds. Well, you need to get the emotions cast out session, which lists all these different emotional spirits that have come into you from the ways you've reacted and responded and dealt with things. Emotional devastation, emotional destruction, emotional withdrawal, you know, all these different ways that you have responded will let these spirits come into you, and that's why you're in the situation you're in. So we need to discover all these things, and if we don't understand this and think correctly about the deliverance process, we'll get nowhere. And this is the problem in the body of Christ. Many people, they just, oh, just get me delivered of all my problems just like that. And they've been to person after person and they say, hey, I really haven't seen any changes or gone very far in my life. Why? Because you haven't understood the network and you haven't been doing it consistently and also walking in the Word to produce fruit and then possess the promise. We've got to discover everything that's in us. And we've got to drive them all out till they're all gone. You just don't cast out a couple, oh, I feel better. That doesn't mean they're all gone. Yeah. They're all go you wait till they're, you, you, you don't just quit then. You just keep casting them out till you get them all out. Otherwise, what's there will re-manifest in your life and you will have problems. God wants us to always be on the attack against all these enemies. Let's go into another area. Let's say you have, because of what people have done to you, you have bitterness, you have resentments, you have negative feelings toward a person and they're still there. 
and they come up and eat at you every once in a while. What are you going to do about it? Well, you've got to deal with it. That is showing you a clear presence of spirits that have come into you because of being victimized by what people did to you and also your reactions to what they did, which is they did an evil thing, you got hurt and wounded, you got bitter, you got angry, you have resentment against them, You're, you have those things affecting you. It will affect you adversely. You may have grief and sorrow over things. Well, that'll just cause your bones to dry up. It'll be roots of arthritis, the Bible talks about. We've got to deal with all these things in the soulish realm. Thoughts will come to you as well. Thoughts of bitterness. Thoughts about what they did to me in the past. Thoughts about, you know, how could they do such a thing to me? How could they abandon me? You know, and you'll start reliving those same things over and over. And you know what? That's what the devil wants. He wants you to relive those things over and over and over because you know what that's going to do? That's going to open the door for more spirits to come in because you keep on reliving it in your mind, thinking on the negatives instead of thinking on the answer. Are we taking our thoughts captive? No. We're letting the devil just run our mind and you'll revolve it around and around and around and around and around and replay that thing over and over and over. No, that's not what we want. God wants us to get free. Amen. We can't be replaying things over and over and over. Do you do that? With, does, the, the word of, does the devil bring the word of God to you and have you replay and replay all the things of the word of God over and over? No, no. never. Instead, he tries to get your mind off anything else, distract you. He don't want you to think on the word. Get you all over here. Well, I was thinking on the word or I was reading the word. Or I was, and it seemed like my mind went over here. What happened? How did my mind get off of this? Uh, that shows you the devil's pretty slick, and he will attack your mind. But then, things that are negative, I mean, you can think on it for hours, mm -hmm. for days. Wallow in it. Mm -hmm. Mull and harbor over it. Keep on thinking about it. What's that doing? That's affecting your mind. That's taking away your sound mind. That's bringing in hurts, wounds, damage, emotions. And all the effects of it, it'll start affecting your body because all these soul realm things will come in and cause you physical problems in your body. We cannot allow our thoughts to think on the negatives that people have done us. Well, they did all these things. They hurt me. They wounded me. I got raped. Incest. They rejected me. They threw me out. They didn't care, care about me. It's all bad. Forgive them. Let it go. And if you keep talking about the same thing about what they did, and you tell everybody in the world about what you went through. You're reliving it over and over and over and over. Why are you telling everybody about all these things? You haven't let go of it. That means you're keeping it alive in you. And you keep it alive in you, who's going to be working in you? The devil. And he will work you. And you think you're going to get free of that problem? No, you're actually creating more problems. Why, what's going on? Your mind. What are you thinking upon? What good is it going to do to you think about the person who molested you? Or the person who abandoned you? Or the person who wasn't faithful to you? Or the person who, you know, they did witchcraft curses over me or something? Whatever it might be. That's not going to do you any good. Why are you talking about it to everybody? Think about it. Well, I'm telling my problems. Well, what good's that going to do? You know what? That's just stirring up more problems in you. It keeps it alive in you. We need to cast it out. We need to take our thoughts captive and start thinking on good things. We're just replaying, letting the devil replay and replay and replay and replay and replay and replay and replay the same old thing over and over and over. Let's think about it. How many, again, get back to what I just said. How many times when the things of the word come into you, they're replaying over you and continually? They aren't. You've got to work at in your mind to keep on thinking these things. They don't, you know, the devil, it's the devil will do everything possible to distract you. Yes. You start praying in tongues and it seems like, well, I was praying in tongues and it seemed like for some reason I quit and I got my mind off all these other things. What in the world happened here? How many bad that happened? You know what I'm talking about. Well, the enemy got to your mind, and he got you distracted on things. He's a master at doing these things. That shows you, hey, 
there's something going on here. I got to get control of this. I am not going to let the devil just run me around with all these different thoughts that are coming in my mind and keep things that are negative alive. Keep them working. Keep you thinking upon them. You get, you'll, you'll be, I forgave them, and then back, pretty soon you're back in the unforgiveness because you were thinking on the negatives they did again. Now what about the negatives? Well, let's start praying the word instead of talking about the problem. Well, I'm going to pray to the Father. Father, you know what's a terrible thing they did to me? They were so mean to me. They hurt me and wounded me. They were bitter towards me. They, they, they rejected me. They didn't listen to me. They, they did these terrible things to me. Is that prayer going to go anywhere? No. no. Don't pray the problem. That's not going to dig it anywhere. He already knows. What's the answer? You're going to pray for them, for what they have need of. You're going to start casting out what came in. I forgive all those persons, and I forgive them, and I let it go, and I'll never bring it up again. Because it's just going to keep it alive. <coughs> If you continue to let your mind think on all these negatives, how are you ever going to get free? You won't. You'll keep those thoughts alive. You'll keep those hurts and wounds going on and on and on. That resentment will be there. That unforgiveness will be there. That, you know, whatever that thought is of what they do will be there. The devil wants to, you know. Let's say you have a lot of pa pa sexual sin was in the past. And the devil keeps bringing up these sexual thoughts and ex ex past experiences and all these things. Is that going to help you get free of the lust and the fornication all that? No, you're going to be revolving it around in your mind. You need to cast that down and cast that out that came in instead of letting that thing work at you. You know, thoughts of whatever it is, you know. Thoughts of doing this, something negative. Thoughts of alcohol, thoughts of drugs, thoughts of... Uh, Eating. Boy, I just want to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Like the gluttony spirit working at you. You need to take those thoughts captive. I mean, get the scripture out. If you're given to appetite, get the knife to your throat. Remember Proverbs chapter 23? <laughs> how, how about thinking on that one instead of, hey, I'm going to go and disgorge myself, you know, continually. If your mind keeps thinking on these things, that's exactly where your mindset will be and that's what you're going to end up doing. If you take your thoughts captive and replace them and think on what the Word says and then cast out the spirits, all the negative things come in, write them all down and start casting them all out and working on them and drive them out. And anytime those thoughts come up, you take them captive and think on a good thing. When a person says, the per thought comes up about what the person did an evil thing to you, I forgive that person. I'm praying for that person. I'm blessing that person when all the time your mind's going on thinking, no, 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 you should have attitudes against that person. Look what that person did to you, blah, 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 shouting at you. I pray for that person. I bless that person. I thank you, Father, for bringing that person to repentance. I thank you for working in their life. And the devils are shouting the other things, wanting you to get an attitude. Why don't you do what the Word says instead of what the devil wants you to do? You see? It all comes down to our mind needs to be doing what God wants us to do. If you get your mind thinking correctly, and you will use your mind to focus on the Word of God and not give place to all these things. One thing for sure, don't let them revolve and evolve and evolve and mull and harbor and go over your mind and replay them a thousand times. It will sink you, for sure. God says take your thoughts captive. And if you've been talking about your negatives, about what so-and-so did or didn't do or whatever, if you don't let go of that, you will never get free. That's reality. God will says, let it go. Let all the bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speak and be put away from you. That's it. Put it away. The devil will bring it up. Up. Oh. No way. I'm not going to let that happen. Otherwise, you'll be bitter in your soul all your life. And it takes away your peace. It takes away all your blessings. See, God wants us to get our mind in order. Well, we talked about a lot of things tonight and kind of went off in some different directions that the Lord will kind of let us in. But really getting our mind focused properly, it's so important. Because victory or defeat 
will start in many ways in your mind. If you're not thinking correctly, you can't even get to square one. But if you have the word in you, but you continue to let the devil barrage you and get you into negative thinking, it, you won't, still won't get anywhere. Even though you know in your mind, because you have knowledge of the word, what to do. But if you keep on doing the wrong things and keep on letting him work, yeah, he's going to take you down every time. Your mind must be focused upon the word. We're to be single-minded on the word. Forgive everybody. Let it all go. Don't hold it any longer. Don't think on it. What's past is past. The water over the dam is gone. Spilled milk has happened. That's it. Forget it. What's happened is done. You can't change what's done as far as, you know, have, you know thinking that it's, you know, not going to happen in my life. Again, what happened happened. What you can do now is get rid of the effects of it by casting out all the spirits. Otherwise, don't go back in the past and think about these things. See, the devil's a master at getting you to think about the past. All the things you didn't do, all the things you should have done, all the things that you shouldn't have done, on and on and on. He'll beat you up left and right. Some people, their mind, the devil just runs their mind left and right. God wants you to get control of your mind. Let's think on good things. Well, one last scripture, and we'll close with this. This is where your mind is to be the checklist for your mind. Philippians 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, they're in line with the truth. Whatsoever things are honest or honorable, whatsoever things are just or righteous, whatsoever things are pure or clean and holy, whatsoever things are lovely, acceptable and pleasing, well, that gets rid of all the rest of it. That's not acceptable for me to think on that. It's not pleasing to me or for God to think on that. I'm kicking that out. Whatsoever the good report, if there be any virtual or more excellence and moral goodness, that means all the filthy things that might have you done in the past, you cast that down. Don't let that thing skip, come in your mind when the devil brings it to you. You cast that thing down. If there be any praise that brings praise to God, think on these things. Well, that eliminates every negative thing, doesn't it? And this is what God wants you to think on. Make your decision today. I'm going to get my mind thinking upon the things God wants because I'm not going to let the devil have place in my mind which will affect my heart, which will affect my choices, which will affect my attitudes and my focus in life. I'm not going to go around the same old barn over and over and over for the next months and years and reliving the same old thing. No, I'm moving forward. I'm going to get the mind of Christ. I'm going to have my mind just be a vessel for God to flow through all the time. Wouldn't that be great? That's what he wants. He wants you to have the mind of Christ so you think on the things that he wants you to think on. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that instructs us about our mind. As I think in the soul, in my mind, that's how I am. Therefore, I got to think right. If I'm not thinking right, in line with the word, I'm in trouble. I make the decision to think on right things. All the negative things that have ever happened in my life, I let them all go. I forgive every person. I forgive myself. I will not think on all these things that I didn't do or of failures. I'm correcting them today. I'm thinking on what God wants. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm moving forward. I'm not looking back. I'm moving forward. I let go of what all happened in my life. I will not allow the enemy to bring it in my mind that I would continue to think on it. I will be ready to revenge all disobedient thoughts that come against me as my am obedient to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I will think on good things. My mind 
shall be a vessel for God. I refuse to let the devil bring thoughts into my mind that will not be challenged and cast down and eliminated. I refuse to let my mind be run by the flesh about what I want, not considering the Word of God. I refuse to let my mind be affected by the worldly ways. I am focused on the things above. I'm getting the Word in me. I will think what the Word says in every situation. I will replace every evil thought. I will have my mind to be the mind of Christ. I thank you, Lord, as I'm a doer of this word. I'm going to be transformed, absolutely changed. So I will think like Jesus thinks from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You do this, things are going to change. Well, the devil's going to be mad. Now you think he's not going to try to bring things at you? He will. That's why you got to be ready. You got to be ready when you, before you probably even get out the door for dealing with the attacks of the enemy. Oh, he's a master at bringing things up. Be ready. Conquer them. Do not believe any of them. Only believe the truth. You say, boy, it sounds like quite a daunting task before me. That's right. So work, take it step by step, little by little, thought by thought, situation by situation. If you catch yourself falling back into something, I confess that is sin. I believe I receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteous. I repent of thinking on that. I turn away from that. I refuse to let that in my mind. I take that captive. I'm going to think on good things. I, my mind's focused on the truth. I'll get the scripture before me. It gets my mind thinking correctly, and I'm going to think on that scripture continually. Amen. That's what you do. Do it all the time. And you're going to get yourself to the place where you're going to walk in victory in your life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for all that you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of your word, and we will have the mind of Christ thinking on the things that you want. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for a delivered mind. Thank you for a healed mind. Thank you for a mind of Jesus Christ. We praise you and thank you for much fruit as we hear and do this in Jesus' name.